Okay then everybody, I'm back on part two of this uh, practice run for my flangers. In my last part you saw me cutting me, me blanks out for my flangers and I was doing them in lead. Well, obviously I've, I've done them now because you see me do them. And now I'm, I'm get, I've got to the point where I've put the flangers on, like so. And I'm going to try and explain how I've done it. And it's going to get a little bit complicated because I'm using one former to do the whole job lot rather than having to make four or five different formers um, A I've not got the material to do it and B uh, I'm not buying any <laughs> if if that's if that's the right way to put it so I've been fathoming out how I can do it with one former okay so here's my drawing I don't think I've shown you this very clear last time Here's, here's my drawing. So this is my back head flange with an offset at the bottom. An offset in a flange at the bottom. This is my throat plate with an offset in a flange at the top. So and, and that one's looking that way and this one's looking this way. So they're going to be sandwiched together. So the the compound flanges, they're both offset, different offsets, and they've got to be inverted so that they, they come together on each other, if that makes sense. Right, so what I'm doing, I'm using two of the stay holes as, as locating pegs for the whole operations. And these top two stay holes here, by the way, the stays, if you're not familiar with that, the stays are the rods that go through the old firebox to, to clamp it all together. So I'm using these top two stays here, one on each side. Right, and on this drawing here, this is where they're positioned here. They're half inch above the centre line of the outer firebox. Okay. And the, they're the same dimensions on, on the throat plate and the uh, back head. Right, the six and a half centres, half inch above centre. So I've turned my flange, not my, yeah, my flange, turned my flange to the dimensions to, to do the forming. Seven and three quarter OD, five and three eighth inside. Right, mark my centre line off. Then I've marked up half inch by six and a half centres. They're my stay holes. Right, so my back head, we'll take the back head to start with. I find my centre, drill my stay holes in, half inch above the centre line. So they're going to be my locating points now all the time while I'm doing this flanging. So, to get the offset on this, if I just like drawing up, it's one inch offset from the centre of the outer firebox. So, from my stay hole, I've marked up one inch and put another set of holes in six and a half centres, one inch up, to give me my offset. So we'll deal with this one now. So now I can put those stay holes which I've drilled in my flange onto them upper pegs like so so imagine this is all, this is all flat now and not been flanged I put that onto them stay onto them locating pins and I've made this uh, 5 and 3 8 diameter piece of plywood with a hole in it 5 and 3 8 so I can line it up on my centre line line it up with my bore Clamp it all together and then I hammer that inner flange on, which I've done, like so. So that's my inner flange of my back head sorted. So now we'll move on to the inner flange of the throat plate, which is a different offset. It's not only a different offset, it's inverted and turn round at the same time so that they, they clamp together like that. Uh, 
Right, so my stay holes on this, because it's going to be inverted with the offset at the top, my stay holes have got to be half inch below the centre for it to match up with this. So I mark my stay holes off half inch below centre, six and a half centres, drill them. Then to get me offset on me flange, my same flange which I'm using, flanging plate, I've now drilled these stay holes half inch below the centre line. So on the drawing it tells you, if I get it right way, that the throat plate is five eighths offset in the opposite direction. So last time I went one inch up for my back head, so this time I've got to come down uh, I've got to come down to my stay hole and then go five eighths of an inch up. So my stay hole's half inch down from the centre and now I've got to go five eighths up to get that offset which then puts me at one eighth above centre line. So I drill two holes one eighth above centre again at six and a half centres. Then I can put my flange in if I get it the right way on them locating pegs there so I'm now offset same piece of wood here imagine it's all flat same old five, five and three eighths clamp that to the the old job lot put it vice and hammer that flange over which I've done as you can see so that's what I've used to do me inner flange, just that piece of plywood. Right. So that's me inner flanges done. So then I come to me outer flanges and they're just straightforward because they're concentric on this former. So then I move my locating pegs up to the stay hole position, half inch up from the centre line. Locate them onto there, onto there, like that. And imagine this is all flat now. But now I've got to contend with this uh, inner flange that's raised up. So what I've done, I've made a for, made a not a former. I've made a, a spacer out of plywood with with the hole the same size as the flange on the OD. Uh, same size as the. O OD of the uh, outer firebox and as you can see it's pretty thin on edge here so I've found this piece of steel plate and just to belt and brace it I'm clamping that plate just screwing it to that wood just to give it some strength while I'm hammering so imagine that's fastened to this now then I put the whole lot onto this Find the centre line, like so, it will fit, because it's come off. Wheat being lead, it's very soft and I've only got to put a bit of pressure on and it moves everything. So once that's gone over there like that, I then Clamp it together, pick it up. I'm not showing you very good because it's not it's not dropped onto flange. Let me try and get it on but a bit better than that. I think what's happened with, with me handling these lead flanges, they, they, they've just like moved a little bit and uh, I can't now get it on. It will go though. I don't want to force it on because I'm going to reuse this and I don't I don't want to damage it. So imagine it's flush up to there now with this plate on. I can now clamp it all up, put it in vice, and hammer my top flange on. Like so. Then it I take it off, then that's that flange completed. 
which are really good fit. So that's my backhead flange done. So now I come on to my throat plate, plate flange. So that's got to go on to those stay holes, half inch above the centre line, which are there. If I can get them lined up. Where they gone? Oh, sorry, I've got to move them pegs to the centre. I hadn't done that, sorry. Imagine those pegs are still in the centre where the stay holes should be. I line them up with the stay holes. Then I've made another spacer with a different offset to match this. That then goes on. Everything's so tight. Because I've hammered lead into such a tight position, it's it's gone tight. Anyway, put my backing plate on just to belt and brace it to strengthen it up. Clamp it all together. Then I hammer my top my top flange on, like so. Just work the way around, hammering that flange on. So. Once that's done, that's the throat plate finished. And as you can see, they're offset different, but then you have to turn them 180 degrees, and then I've got to invert it like that. That's why I explained to you about them stales wanting drill in the opposite direction. And then it all clamps together with the with the firebox. So imagine that tube's in the middle. There's my stay holes. My tube will be in the middle. And they'll drop on and line up with each of those stay holes. I don't know if you can see through the camera them stay holes lined up. I don't think you can. Well that one's showing there. So that's why I had to put my st uh, stay holes the opposite direction because I've had to rotate the flange 180 degrees. Then all my fire tubes will fit in here and this is this part here is the um, where the fire sits and where the ash drops in. Uh, I hope I've been clear with that. It's made it more complicated on my part because I'm... I'm trying to get away with just using one flange and I think if you see anybody do it probably that makes them uh, in, a, in a bigger quantity they'll have different uh, formers for each operation I'm sure they will anyway I've managed to do it with one former anyway I think that's it for now um, what I'm going to do next I'm going to mark my copper up well I've started to mark it up Mark my copper up, get it all cut out and uh, get it annealed and then I can make a start on doing my, my proper flanges. So uh, watch this space and I'll uh, I'll try and um, I'll try and do a few videos of me progressing with, with with the copper. Thanks for watching then and if you've not seen my other videos, take a look if you're interested in what I do. Uh, and I'll catch you next time then, so bye for now.